We need justice for Alexander Volkov. So if you don't know the story, which I'm sure you do if you've clicked on this video, UFC 310. The biggest fight of Alexander Volkov's career. If he wins this one, he's in title conversations next. Is it going to be him versus Aspinall in a rematch? Is he going to be a backup opponent for a potential Aspinall versus Jones fight? Then to get a title shot afterwards. This was the most important fight of Alexander Volkov's career. He's been around for a very long time. He's been grinding. He's been improving. And he beats Cyril Garn two rounds to one. Round two and three. I've watched him back. I don't see how you can score either round to Cyril Garn unless you're trying to give him the win, Adelaide Bird, which we're going to get to in a second because she's had some history with her judging, which makes me think that she shouldn't be anywhere near judging a fight in the future. She scored Canelo Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin. One. 118 to 110 in favor of Canelo Alvarez. Do you understand how insane and pre-written of a scorecard that is? She was stood down. Temporarily. You can't judge anymore. Why then does the UFC, and I know it's the commission that does this, which is the most annoying thing ever because I feel like all of these people that are judges just literally have parents that run the commission and therefore they're now employed for life no matter how bad they are. It's disgusting. That's my theory anyway. I'm not saying anything concrete. That's just a theory that I have. Why is she in the UFC judging very important fights when she saw the first Golovkin-Canelo fight 118 to 110 in favor of Canelo? A pre-written scorecard. She was stood down. You can't judge anymore for the foreseeable future until we let you back. Oh, you want to judge Volkov versus Garn too? Bring yourself in. Main card of UFC 310. Is there no other judges? Do we have five judges? And that we... Oh, well, we would have chosen another judge, but there's only five of them in the world that we can choose between. No! These are important fights. Why would you choose someone with this history to score that fight, which could result in a legacy-defining win for either one of the fighters? Alexander Volkov. I mean, look at this. This is the media other than MMA Junkie, which is one of the more mainstream corporate ones that gave it to Cyril Garn. We got literally everyone scoring it for Volkov 29-28. You know what? There is more of it. And here's one that says 30-27 Volkov. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Maybe you can see it now. There's one that says 30-27 Volkov. That's what I want to mention as well. I've watched back the fight. I think Garn won round one with the guillotine attempt. It's a close round though. I just want to say this. Volkov Garn is more likely... 3-0 Volkov than it is 2-1 Cyril Garn. Round one is a closer round to score than round two. Round three, there's no debate. I've seen someone say in the replies of one of these, um, something like, well, the submission attempts of Garn. Listen, I made this argument in the Nganu fight because there was literally nothing else happening in that round. Him holding on to that Kimura that was never going to work in round three is not a legitimate submission attempt. If the submission has zero chance of being successful, but they're just in the process of going for it, it shouldn't mean anything. He's pulling a Kimura, therefore pinning himself on bottom position, not able to do anything from the position. It's not like he twisted Volkov over with the Kimura, ending up on top with it, and then spinning around again, Frank Mir Noguera style. He's not doing that, where he's gator rolling Volkov all the way over with this Kimura attempt that's so close to being in. Trust me, guys. He's on top, and he's pinned the arm behind the back of Volkov. He could tap at any moment. There was never a moment like that in this fight. If you look at the leg lock that he went for, the heel hook, it was never in. Volkov immediately went out of it. The Kimura attempt that he went for, that he continues to go for in his grappling, that constantly makes him lose based on grappling, it was never a thing. Sure, it could be a threat, and you never know if Volkov is retarded and makes the most stupid moves possible from this position. Maybe that could have worked as a Kimura. I, I don't see how we're scoring this fight to Garn. Well, I do. And that's what I want to get to as well. The UFC always get what they want. 2-1 to Cyril Garn. Now they can make the Aspinall fight. 
I'm done trying to play this game of... I just said this at the start of the video. I have no idea how they would score this to Garn. I do. And it's not based on the fight itself. Think back on robberies that you know of. And I've brought up this as an example. Canelo versus Gennady Golovkin by the same judge, Adelaide Bird, that Joe Rogan has like called out recently, not recently, but a long time ago for saying, nice woman, my mum's a nice woman. I wouldn't let either of them judge a fight. If that is like a commonly joked about thing amongst people that know the judges behind the scenes, why is she still judging top level fights? I don't, I do get it. They want this. It's never gone against them ever. And that's a fact. Volkov Aspinall is not a hyped up rematch. There's no hype in that. Volkov's not a big name. He doesn't have a massive French audience that he can bring to the table. Who else are they going to headline these Paris cards without Garn? You know, they did Moicano, Benoit Saint-Denis. Benoit Saint-Denis has now been destroyed. Nasadina Mavov is going to be the French poster boy. I highly doubt it. It always works out in their favor. I'm not playing this game anymore of, oh, well, you know, maybe they saw that round two a little differently. I can't think of a strike that Garn landed where I was like, ooh, I can't think of one. He tapped the low kicks a few times, landed a few shots upstairs with some punches here and there. Sometimes he popped the jab and it landed. But all of the shots, and the strikes were very even, by the way. Round two, Garn was actually up on the numbers. I don't know if I agree with that. He was, like, tapping at the leg with an inside low kick and shin to shin a lot of the time as well on Volkov, who was checking a lot of them and checked kicks, go towards the person who had their kick checked. We went over this with the Munoz and O'Malley stats to add Munoz up. Um, his kicks were getting checked. They should not count as a strike. I don't understand that, especially when you're landing with your foot. If you're going shin to shin... It's hurting both of you. If you're getting your leg kick checked and it's your foot landing on someone's knee that they've turned over to check the kick, that should be a positive for the person who's checking the kicks. Either way, I'm done playing the game of I don't know what they're doing. Who knows what they're judging anymore? Even uh, Alexander Volkov's like, maybe she liked Cyril Gunn's body more and he has some things to say about this. I don't know if she works on her judging skills or she just sometimes comes to watch the fights because she likes it and give the victory wherever she likes. The UFC will never change this. They get what they want every time. It's never Jared Gordon. I know I'm boys with Pimlet now. Yeah, we go back and forth. You know, me and Pimlet are cool. But the fact is, Jared Gordon is never winning a controversial robbery decision over Paddy Pimlet. That's just not happening. Yan is never winning a controversial robbery decision over Sean O'Malley. It's just never happening. Dominic Reyes is never going to win a controversial robbery decision over John Jones. It's never happening. And whenever you see these weird scorecards where you know the star lost, but still there's this one random scorecard. You know what I mean? Adesanya versus Whitaker 2. Not a crazy robbery. You know, and we can go through some of these. There are certain fights that aren't crazy. They're not crazy robberies. They're very close competitive fights. And you'll just see a 4-1 scorecard out of nowhere when you know it's 3-2 either way. Whitaker Adesanya 2. It's never going to be Whitaker getting a 4-1 scorecard out of nowhere. Yoel Romero Adesanya. I know he's the champ and, you know, you lean towards the champion, but I've given you examples of prospects that have this same treatment. They get what they want every time. And I'm going to play this video of Dana White talking to Alexander Volkov. Who, look at him, man! He's trained so much for this. You can see the improvements that Volkov has been making in his game. He came into this fight with knee injuries. I've seen uh, Cyril Garn actually, the first kick he threw was a low kick that uh, busted his foot. More power to the fact that I'm saying those low kicks were not effective. He was damaging himself more because Volkov was checking him. No shit, he broke his fucking toe on the, co on the low kick that he was throwing. Either way, before you start saying, no, oh, his toe, his toe. Volkov pulled out of this fight not long ago with knee injuries. This was supposed to be in October. It's now in, uh, in December because Volkov had to delay the entire fight. Because he had knee injuries, he shows up with both of these braces on his knees. And then we got Dana like, you got fucked, buddy. You got fucked. And it's just like, that's not enough. When are we going to finally overturn one of these things? 
Everyone knows who won the fight, except for two judges that saved the UFC by having Cyril Garn win. We'll get into another reason why I think they did that. But let me just play this video of Dana White talking to Volkov. That doesn't fix anything. You got fucked. Anyway, moving on. Have fun with the Curtis Blades rematch as the Apex Fight Night main event in fucking April. You know what I mean? I, I don't like... This is nothing without the moves to fix it behind the scenes. You got I don't know what we'll do, but we'll try and make it right by you, okay? I don't know what we'll do, but we'll try to make it right by him. I don't know what we'll do, but we'll try and make it right by him. Because they can't overturn it. What are they going to do to make it right by Volkov? Give him his win bonus? A lot of people in reaction to the Volkov decision started saying things like, oh my god, half of his money as well. I, I really don't think Volkov really cares about half of his money. Will it be better for him if he gets that extra paycheck of the win bonus? Yes, it would. He obviously cares a little bit. But the main thing in Volkov's brain right now is, I've done all of this graft since the Aspinall loss against all of these guys coming up in the, in the heavyweight division. I've looked great in nearly every fight since then. Schooled Pavlovich for three rounds when they were friends and didn't even want to fight each other. And the UFC like tricked them into going into a matchup against each other by saying the other one accepted when they didn't really yet. And then both of them ended up saying yes. So he's ruined friendships in this process. He's improved enough to school Pavlovich, one of the most dangerous power punches in the history of the heavyweight division, for three straight rounds. The plot armor he has needed to make this comeback in his career. And he's at the final hurdle. And he does what needs to be done. And Garn gets his hand raised for fucking nothing. Hard work, discipline over the past few years. Cyril Garn wandering around movie sets. Doing this other fashion brand deal. Not showing up half the time. Barely active anyway. Just shows up, has a shitty performance, knows that he does, so he walks out of the fucking cage afterwards after they announce him as the winner because he can't even fucking believe it. And he gets his hand raised and moves on into these title fights moving forward. It pisses me off. Because it's... He's hearing Dana say, we'll figure this out, and Volkov's probably thinking, what, are you going to overturn it then? Couldn't care less about his extra... He could care. Obviously, he wants that extra win bonus, but... It's not about that, man. It's not about, oh, he lost half his money. There's legacy being defined by bullshit decisions. I have no idea. The whole You I don't have no idea. They fed up in the back. And then we're just gonna move on from this. I'll talk to you in a little while, okay? I apologize. Look how destroyed he is, man. It's like, they're going to say all this. We'll hear that he got his win bonus paid out. But now he's 0-2 against Cyril Garn. They're never going to justify a trilogy. He'll never get that one back. And he'll be chucked to the... He'll probably be given like, oh, sorry about that, bud. Anyway, here's Curtis Blades. Then Jailton Almeida. Then another prospect on the come up. Then the great Mick Parkin. You know what I mean? Monsters, I tell you. No, but seriously, though, he's probably going to have to go through another murderer's row. At a minimum, Curtis Blades in a rematch, and then Jailton Almeida probably coming off a win. And that's like, sorry about that, Volkov. Back of the queue, time to work your way back up again. They're never going to fix this, though. UFC got exactly what they wanted, yet again. Here's him saying things like he's furious about his loss. How can I do more damage and get the loss? And he had more control as well, but... See, it's not an argument of damage or control, as we've been arguing about in decisions. You can have damage and control and still fucking lose the fight somehow. I don't... That's, that's a confusing thing. Normally we're saying, ah, oh, the control or ah, oh, the damage. But in this fight, we literally have to go into it saying, sure, the damage and control were Volkov's, but uh, Cyril Garn, I guess. No, that's not how it should work. But the UFC got what they want. Cyril Garn... In the mix at the top of heavyweight. A big, massive matchup with Tom Aspinall down the line. Uh, John Jones is harmed in the negotiation process because 
without Cyril Garn coming off a win, if Volkov was the winner here and he had just beaten Garn and moved to number two behind Tom Aspinall at number one as the interim champ, they would have no negotiating power against John Jones because they couldn't say, if you don't take the fight, we'll just move on with this one. Because Aspinall, Volkov too, although the hardcore fans would love it, it's not a fight that they can really use in a negotiation process against Jones. They could say, ah, we'll return to normal by having Cyril Garn versus Aspinall in the UK, and that'd be a huge event. French fans would go across the uh, tunnel, go into London. They do a London card pay-per-view in the middle of the year. Everything would move on without John Jones. But now they don't. Now they have negotiation power. Now they have options of what to do moving forward at heavyweight. And don't get me wrong, this is a better outcome for the sport. This is a better outcome for the future of the heavyweight division. But it's bullshit. Gordon never gets a robbery decision over Pimlet. Reyes is never getting a dominant uh, a robbery decision over John Jones. And remember, John Jones had that fight scored to him four rounds to one as well on one of the scorecards. Go through the robberies. It ain't never going to fucking happen. McGregor is in his prime. If he ever made it to a decision that was controversial, he's never getting it scored against him by robbery. So they can say, oh, we'll work on this. Those judges, man, how about them? They love the judges. They love that they're trash because the judges being trash just so happened to keep Canelo around at the top of the sport in boxing for the next however many years after the first uh, Gennady Golovkin fight by scoring 118 to 110. So they might slap him on the wrist and say, you're being too obvious. Go behind the scenes. And I've always had this thing about boxing. They don't work with the commission. Uh, UFC, they don't work with the commission. It's the commission. Why is the commission always benefiting boxing in the UFC? Without failure, every fucking time. We can talk boxing in general as well. If the Wilder Fury 1 fight wasn't scored a draw, we don't get the great trilogy that benefits boxing. And is it the best for the sport? Yes. But in my opinion, what's best for the sport is good fucking decisions and rewarding fighters that have fucking earned their fucking win. This is bullshit, fake legacy trash. I hate it, man. Everyone. This guy is probably writing the fucking scorecards. As many people overall that watch MMA every week, week in, win out, week out on a regular basis. I'm going to scroll down so you can see it. Week in, week out on a regular basis. As many people scored it, 3-0 Volkov as scored it to Cyril Garn. But two of the judges watching scored it to Garn. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. I'll see you later. Justice for Alexander Volkov. It makes no fucking sense. I, I, we just move on. We're just going to move on. And that's just that. And it's sad. But we need an overturning of some of these losses. But we're never going to get them. So I don't know the fucking point of making this video. Shit pisses me off. And it's every pay-per-view. Every week. And it never goes against what the UFC want. So Dana can say, we'll figure this one out for you, Volkov. We'll give you a percentage of your win bonus to smooth things over. Um, but yeah, they're just never going to get that. Nothing's ever going to be fixed, man. It makes you... What we need to start doing is deducting points. If this is going to be the system moving forward where the star always wins the close controversial decision even when they should have lost, we need to start going through legacy and saying, okay, well, he had star power. I'm deducting a point of legacy from him. You know what I mean? Well, this guy won the belt and had seven defenses. And this guy won the belt and had seven defenses. But this guy was a star. So he had a much better treatment of things. The other guy's the GOAT over him. You know what I mean? Whereas star power these days seem to dictate who's the GOAT over who in a division. And someone's, you know, won over the fans more by being more of a name. So they're going to get more votes for being the GOAT of their division. All of this. We need to start thinking in the opposite sense. People that aren't names have a much harder time in this sport than people who are. And the decisions are absolutely proven of that. See you later. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. Goodbye. It's bullshit, man. I need to go. I need to stop the video before I just start raging out. It's bullshit. Every time. See you later. Justice for, justice for Big Pimlet. Paddy Pimlet finally makes the weight cut to make the heavyweight limit. And this is how you guys treat him. Fucking pathetic, lad. Hey, women need to stop judging, lad. See you later.